Hi guys, I am back, this time with a haul of bassoon goodies. Uh, we all know from my JSU Double Read Day video that I was feeling a little bit spendy at uh, the day. Since then, I've also done a little bit of extra shopping, catching up on some purchases that needed to happen for the studio here at JSU, and as well for my own private um, read making that I do. So let's dig into some goodies that I bought. First off, I bought a brand new read case. I saw this read case at Double Read Day 2014 when our guest artist Benjamin Coelho came with it. Um, on it, it has a dial to show you how humid it is inside the read case. It is a sealed plastic acrylic case that's heavy duty. I had hesitated to buy this um, in the past because I was scared the acrylic wasn't heavy enough. Um, but reads and stuff really make quality, heavyweight products. Um, I bought this largely for travel because I find that my bassoon reads, when I travel on an airplane, they dry out. They dry out more than my skin dries out. And it takes usually like soaking them for 10 minutes to try to get them to rebound and then another five minutes of playing. So this way, I can keep the reeds a little bit more hydrated when I travel. Um, and then inside it has a little sponge that you can soak up in water so that those reeds will stay soaked. Another item that I bought for travel um, and basically to have in my bag of tricks for whenever I hit some place that is crazy with the weather or a different altitude but that I can always be sure that I can play without having to do read adjusting if I don't have any time at the last second is a Legere plastic reed. Now these are not the plastic reeds that I had when I was growing up. Um, my dad actually bought me a plastic reed when I first started bassoon um, because he was so tired of me going through reeds on a uh, fast basis and it sounded so bad and he wouldn't buy me any other reeds that I literally bit the plastic reed and left teeth marks in it so that it would no longer work. <laughs> you had to buy me real like reeds again. Um, the reeds now that are plastic, they're a totally different product. I'm really glad I bought these in person because it took me trying about three to four of them until I found one that matched my instrument and played in tune. So if you are interested in getting one of these plastic reeds, um, I would suggest trying a couple prior to purchasing because um, the first three were not a match with my instrument. They are unique, they are different. They're not just mass all the same. The next thing I got that I'm kind of just like, I'm not sure, but I have it, and it happened, and it wasn't overly expensive, was my grip. Um, my grip goes on the left side of the bassoon for the left hand, um, so that the left hand doesn't slide around too much while playing bassoon. I find that this product uh, creates a greater challenge for half holding or fast technique when I'm working on it. That being said, I have not tried it in the super humid months here in Alabama, and that's what I really want to try it because um, an outdoor summer concert in July, this could be a great asset. But for now, honestly, I'm not really using it. It's sitting in the case because it was making my Puccinella excerpt really challenging to play to get over all of the half holes and venting. So I have it. Not sure quite how I feel about it yet, but I bought it. The next piece that I bought is the most expensive bits that I have bought in the past month. Um, I ended up buying the Lafrec uh, sound panels. Um, I bought a small set in gold and also a um, larger set in like they call it brass but it looks like a rose gold to me. Um, if I had to choose a color name for it, I mean, I know it's not actually gold, but if I were buying jewelry, this is what rose gold would look like. Um, the smaller of the two panels, um, they are separate, um, goes on the vocal to the wind joint, and the larger of the panels go from the long joint onto the bell. Um, let me just say that a month ago, I thought these were witchcraft and just just a shenanigan, a gimmick that you could buy. Um, I had talked to my colleague Ron Wirt about it and he had mentioned an article which I'll link down below um, by Lynn Heilman um, that talks about them adding more of an overtone series to the sound. Uh, I was kind of like, why can't you do that with a reed? 
why wouldn't you do that by softening the body? Um, I didn't understand quite that they could create a bit of um, air movement and vibration that would shift on the instrument. Uh, since playing with these, I have noticed um, a difference in the sound. I have noticed um, that dynamic contrast and resistance is actually easier. I tried a variety of the different panels. They also come in silver, but this was the matchup for my bassoon. And I do have to say that when you are looking at these, you should try to match them to the instrument, much like you would match a vocal to the instrument. And I don't play with them all the time, but I do have them in my bag of tricks so that, um, you know, when I do want that extra boost of sound, um, something that I really want to project in a different way, add a different color or timbre to the sound, that I have those options. I'd be remiss if I didn't tell you that I have been stocking up on cane and that I am a cane hoarder. Um, I have run into times in the past when cane was not readily available that I tried to order it and it was back ordered. And when it was back ordered, I could not make reads. And because of this, I now stockpile it. So while Miller was here, I did buy a uh, couple of the gouged cane um, that then I will shape and profile on my own setup. Um, and this is the Donzy version of it. Um, and then from Woodwind Brasswind, I bought several bundles of the Rigotti just gouged cane so that I can make reads whenever I want. For my studio, I have bought um, a bundle of Rigotti gouge shaped and profiled cane. I got this for them largely so that they could focus on forming and not a lot of time on scraping. This cane comes and it is relatively thin. I've only been working on it about three reads that I've made myself, but it is thinner than the Donzi gouge shaped and profiled. But yet it's still heavy enough that uh, they can make some minor adjustments and continue to break pieces in. Um, also the cane is heavy heavier weight. Um, it's a thicker, harder density cane than um, some of the just clip the tip and play cane that will only last for about a week. This has a tendency to last a bit longer and does require a little bit of scraping, but not so much that my students are overly intimidated. What I have found though is that the cane overall is much wider than the Rieger 1A shape or the Fox 2 shape. Um, both are very similar and this is much wider than that, especially at the tube. Um, the blade as well is um, at the very tip, two millimeters longer than the uh, Fox 2 or the Rieger 1A for my measurements. You will have that flexibility in sound um, and also greater projection because it is wider. It can be a little bit more challenging though to make a rounder tube because it's wider. The studio insisted that we buy um, some variegated multicolored thread. This is one of those that they had seen when Diana Dunn, our guest artist from the Atlanta Opera and Ballet, had come in in October. And as soon as we had money from JSU Double Read Day, we used our proceeds to go ahead and get um, a spool of this for the studio. As a professor, I love it because each of their reads is easily identifiable visually from afar because the pattern rarely creates the same read more than once. So it gives me the ability to see which read are they playing on today? Is it the read they played last week? Is that one that's good? Okay, what shape did they use? It's a great identifying tool. From Forest, we also bought new rulers for the studio. We bought three of these. I'm very picky when it comes to rulers. Um, largely, I want it to be metal, relatively thin, and I want zero to be at the far edge so that I get the most precise measurements as possible. Um, Forest, I find, has the best of these. The numbers don't wear off as easily because they are engraved a little bit deeper with the ink on the numbers. And also the metal is relatively thin, so I can get right up on the reed to get the best dimension. We also used a bit of our Double Read Day profits um, to purchase a couple of swabs from Forest Music. Um, we bought a universal swab for our school Loray uh, oboe and also a universal swab for our school Heckle Bassoon. Uh, these are pull through so that they have less chance of getting stuck in the instrument. Um, and they also are silk in order to uh, be sure that they are the most absorbent. Swabbing your instrument is always something you should be uh, working on 
largely to make sure that you are avoiding any rust or any rot in the instrument and that you'll also extend the pad life of your instrument. Um, if you're curious to know more about swabbing out a bassoon, I have a tutorial on that and I will link that down below. If you want to know more about my preferences of silk over cotton and also about a universal swab, I have a blog post on that and I'll link that down below. Okay guys, that wraps up my haul from uh, winter 2015. Uh, be sure that if you liked this video, you give it a thumbs up and that you subscribe so you never miss a future video. And be sure to comment down below what your favorite item is that I purchased. I will see you guys next time. Bye! We are gonna go through the pieces of the bassoon and also how to put the bassoon together. So this could also be helpful for many beginning bassoonists or all, um, for, you know, they can. So you will have that flexibility, oh, you